Good morning, everybody. We've got a bunch of good riding videos coming to you sometime later today, probably tomorrow by the time I get home and cut them up and process them and get them uploaded. But I'm going to do a little recap of the weekend, a little Sunday morning ride with Dave. We are up in, I don't even know what freaking town we're in. Technically, it's Tobacco Mill Road or something? I don't know. Our buddy Big Kev. Huge, huge thank you to Kevin, man. The guy pulled out all the freaking stops for us. And uh, didn't ask him to, but he's a nice guy. He's a generous guy. And he's like, hey, let's all go up to the, to the mountains for the weekend up to Deals Gap. And he's trying to figure out who's going. He's like, look, I'm just going to rent a big-ass five-bedroom house on the side of a mountain. And uh, I'm going to cover the costs. And, you know, whoever shows up, shows up. So uh, him and his girlfriend, Serenity. And then um, me and my wife. My wife and I, if we're going to be grammatically correct. We had Cameron, Dean, and Jake. Unfortunately, Bob couldn't make it because he is attending Santa school. You heard that right. I don't judge. Uh, unfortunately, he missed a really good weekend. And then Nick was supposed to come, but he ended up going out to Oregon for work. Um, had a, got a contract out there for a few weeks or something. Could you know need, need to, needed to take it. So unfortunately, he missed that. As did Bob. And then Jonathan's just freaking lame. But we had some great. I'll, I'll throw a a graphic in here somewhere of the route we took yesterday. So we came up yesterday. We came up 985. I'm sorry, Friday morning, 985 all the way up to Franklin. Oh, but South Carolina, or I guess it would be South Carolina, North Carolina, I don't know, one of them, because it's weird, it's like the corner of Tennessee, North and South Carolina are all kind of close to each other there. So we came down and uh, came up, went there, gassed up, and then we headed up on uh, this road, which is 28. And then on um, Friday, we did run up and down the Dragon. I did it on this thick beast. <laughs> it, just, it was fun, it was all right, but it was a freaking workout. But the real ride was yesterday. We did about 211 miles of pretty much nothing but sweepers and gnarly twisties with just a little bit of highway. But that was like 11 of the 211 miles. 200 miles of it was just corner carving. So long day very tiring got back to the house kev picked up a shit ton of uh shrimp and cajun sausage and steaks and all kinds of stuff and just handed it to don and i and i was like here's dinner please cook it and we're like fuck dude happy to man <laughs> so uh we had a bit of a feast last night on sausage shrimp steaks kind of good stuff. Got my little bottle of bourbon out. Everybody had a good relaxing evening. Um, we'll have some good videos of the rides. The rides were just awesome. The roads, um, in a nutshell, we went up 28, which is this road, past Fontana, great ride. Hit the Dragon, went over to the Foothills Parkway, which might be my new favorite road. Um, used to be uh, what's the name of it? The uh, Cherahola Skyway. But it got washed out on the Telego Plains side. Like the road's gone. A big chasm in the middle of the thing. So, and then they got to get in there and not just repair that road, but they got to inspect the surrounding sea. You know, you're on the side of a mountain. <laughs> so it's, it's, you know, a thousand feet down kind of thing down a slope. So if uh, the rest of the, that area, you know, that area where it gave out, but you might have compromised integrity of the soil and everything around it, so they gotta do a whole analysis and shore it up and all kinds of stuff. So they were like, find us a route. So uh, we had Wi-Fi there at the house, so jumped on the Google Maps and I'll post the route. It was a freaking phenomenal route. So essentially we went out, let's see, what was it? We went, all right, so we're now 28, still going the other direction of the road I'm on, past Fontana Dam to the Dragon Resort. 
went and did the dragon. Got a, you know, got a fairly good run. Dean and Dean came up on my MT10. His, uh, his bike's down right now with uh, running on his Toronto's running on three cylinders. So they're replacing uh, some parts, and they weren't able to get him a loaner for the weekend. So uh, I was like, dude, take, take my bike. So he took my MT-10 up. And it was cool then, because I had both bikes up here. I didn't have a trailer or anything. And so it was nice to be able to, uh, he and I just switched back and forth. It's like, all right, I did the Dragon yesterday twice on the big bike. Here, you take it. And I'm going to run it on the MT-10. And then we get to the Foothills Parkway, and we'd switch back again. And so you get a little variety. And that's actually really nice because now I'm 51 years old and I'm not in the shape I used to be. When you're in the saddle all day long, my bikes are fairly comfortable, but it's actually really nice to switch bikes because you're, you're it's almost like you're using different muscles. You're putting pressure on different areas, so you get a break. The muscles that are kind of in the areas that are kind of resting when you're riding one bike and then start to get tired, uh, you know, when you ride the other, so it's, you get to switch back and forth, and it's just a different riding experience. You ride this very differently than you ride the, uh, the MT-10, so. It was an amazing ride. So we went down the Dragon, hit the Foothills Parkway, which is a fantastic road. And, and at least a couple times I've been on it, doesn't seem to be that heavily policed, for now. Which is good because we were able to find sections. I didn't run the camera the whole time because I was like, oh, this is going to be good. And then all of a sudden it got really fast and good. And I'm like, but then you're just thinking about riding. I wasn't thinking about the camera. <laughs> Eventually I did turn it on and I got some video. Um, then we went to a little town, grabbed lunch at a, some little cafe. Um, and actually the food was great. It turned out to be good. And um, after we got off the Foothills Parkway, then we went down some side road. Wow, was that Highway 331? We'll, we'll show you the map. And um, we took that road and uh, ran down along the river. Now there were some areas that we didn't bother filming because there was some goddamn bunch of traffic and out-of-towners and Priuses going like, no joke, like 17 miles an hour in a 35 or 45 zone. It was horrible. People stopping in the middle of the road to take pictures. Just stopping their car, getting out and taking pictures. It's like, dude, you're in a road. So anyway, we finally, we just had to pass a bunch of people, got around them. And uh, we went up to, took that road to the end, made a left onto another road that ran along the river. It was beautiful. When that got to the end, we picked up 441 South and took that to Cherokee like where Harris Casino and stuff is. And 441 was a lot of fun. But I'll tell you, the best roads that we rode this weekend, we, we rode the Dragon three times. Eh, I'm not that, you know, it's like, the Dragon's fun, but it's, to me, it's just, eh. It's hard, you, ha you really have to get it to yourself. A um, lot of traffic, a lot of Harleys, people coming over the line your lane, tractor trailer that shouldn't be on the goddamn road. Almost, you know, all of a sudden is making a super tight hairpin and he's got to go all the way into the oncoming lane to make the turn so he doesn't go off the road and down a ravine, which happens more often than you would think. And car clubs and out-of-towners and piece of shit cars that can't go fast. So the Dragon, as nice as it is and as much as it's world known and everyone goes there to go to the Dragon, it's honestly, it's so crowded you really, it's hard to get a good run. You gotta go, you, you guys like Max Rist and some of those guys, you gotta go on like a Wednesday and you got it to yourself and you can just tear up it if you want. Um, but the, the, that wasn't really the goal. It's the surrounding area. This is beautiful country, man. And I've, I've got some good scenery on some of the videos, but the Foothills Parkway is my new favorite road. My second favorite road up there was a road called Waya. You can find it on Google Maps. W-A-Y-A-H. All right, we're gonna turn here onto the Hellbender. It's a nice little technical road. Not a very fast road, but it's nice. So um, that 
road way up was awesome. And I was like, okay, I've been turning off my camera anytime there's traffic. I'm saving battery. And I'm like, okay, this is the road. It runs down along a river and it, they repaved it last year. So it's new pavement, but it's had a year to kind of weather in a little bit. So you get that tar and oil off the top surface, you know, when it's freshly paved. So it was glass smooth, beautiful flow running along the river it's almost entirely under the wood under the canopy so with my tinted visor it was almost a little bit dark <laughs> hoping the, I was gonna say well I hope the video came out but that's the problem I got two minutes in before we got to the twisty bits we we're on the road leading into it down to the river and the battery goes Gunk, and shuts off and I didn't find out that the battery had run dead until after we got back We're gonna have a little fun on this road. I see another bike coming up behind me with Donna, so. All right, I'm leaving them both behind, so he's gonna pass her and come play, or he's not that fast. We'll see. But, um, yeah, I got to the end of that road. It's the first time I ever ran it, and I just followed Cameron. Um, he's been on at least a couple times. He knows it a little bit. So he ran a good, good pace. Although it's funny because he's like, yeah, we're just going to run on the river. It's not a fast road. And then we hit the twisty parts and he just freaking books out. I had to chase him down with the MT-10. And, uh, but he held a really good pace. So I was able to keep with him. And I was like, this video is going to be goddamn fantastic. Yeah, it would have been. <laughs> but it wouldn't. Because I didn't get it. Is what it is. One thing I noticed partway through the day on this ZX14 is I've got a new Q5S on the back. I got a Q3 Plus on the front. They basically, I, I think they're phasing out the Q3 Pluses, so I've got the Q5S, or yeah, Q5S, the street version. Really great tire, but I'm getting delamination between the different tread compounds. It's a dual compound, so you got the medium in the middle and the soft on the sides. It was uh, there was a line, like almost like a tear between the two different rubbers, like where they vulcanize them together. And I'm like, holy shit, is my tire gonna split apart? Is it? I mean, I can't imagine that this bike is too powerful for a Q5S. I mean, plenty of bikes that, well, not stock bikes that make more power, but you know, there's people with tuned bikes and turboed and everything else. I'm like, can't be that. So it's wearing through the part, so I'm hoping it was just on the top layer. And as I wear down into it, it seems to be getting a little less. But I may have to go in and put in a warranty claim at Cycle Gear and see if they'll replace it. I don't have the, the tire guard, you know. I didn't pay extra for that, but it's like, it's a brand new tire you guys installed. And if it's separating, that's a manufacturer defect. Maybe I can get them to give me a new tire and toss it on. But Dean was uh, riding the MT-10. I... I'm hopeful. I think he might change. As much as I love the Aprilias, we're going to give uh, Aprilia a little negative press here. I, I, I have been an Aprilia fanboy. Not as much as Ducati. I love Ducatis. I love the company. I like their style. I like their attitude, their design language, and just their philosophy and how they approach building bikes. And I know that a Ducati's not going to be as you know, reliable as a Honda or Yamaha, but they're pretty goddamn reliable these days. All right, so we got some people catching up, my wife and that other dude. All right, good, we got one person turning off. Now we only got one car to pass, that makes it easier. So, um, was I get so easily distracted <laughs> so uh, yeah so uh, the Aprilia you know he had the issue with um, the rear cylinder valve guide so I guess it's a steel insert that goes into the aluminum 
you know, head, and the valve slides up and down in it. Well, the Aprilias are great motors, and they are reliable unless you're wailing on them a lot. If you're wailing on them a lot, the dealer, the tech, the master tech is like, if you're doing track days and you're in spending a bunch of time in the upper rev range, you need to have the valves checked like after two track days. Come on, man. You could totally slow down and pull over and let us buy. You're running wide under the speed limit. So what happens is if you don't, like the valve intervals are 12,000 miles. They're like, you should be doing them every four or six. And it costs two grand. It's ridiculous how expensive it is. And if you ride the bike a lot, you're like, okay, I got to get the valves done at least once, if not twice a year at, for two grand a pop. It's crazy. So, um, yeah, he was running on three cylinders because the valve guides were so worn and they were like elongated, like elliptical instead of round. It was allowing the valve to go down basically crooked, cockeyed. And so it wasn't seating properly against the valve seat and had no compression because it won't seal. <laughs> Man, this is such a fun road until you get behind someone in a, a handicapped driver in a fucking minivan. Jesus Christ. And of course, they're from Georgia, so they're out of towners and not local. Gonna have to do one of my sketchy passes, my signature move. Had one of those on the dragon yesterday. <laughs> Had to go apologize to somebody. Uh, the second I see even a little bit of straight. Look at this guy, he's all over the. Thank you! Thank you! Boy, now I'm gonna catch up to the other one, the Camry. Probably also from Georgia and out of town. Yup. Uh, Hall County, that's my county, so yeah. Come on, please pull over, pull over, pull over. Oh, you dink. I'm trying to curse less. Come on, you had a pull off right there. You saw the other car pull off. That's the difference. The locals will absolutely do that for you. The locals see the bikes come in or whatever. I haven't tried it in the sports car. I haven't brought the Mustang up yet. But the out of towners are like, well, I'll just park in here and do, go way under the speed limit. And... but almost all the locals would pull over for you. Like right there, you could have just pulled to the side and waved us by. You got three bikes on your bumper. And I know legally they don't have to. Awesome. Yeah, so we've got uh, some of the other videos. We've got uh, a drag race couple. Did a rolling start figure to be a little bit more fair for Jake on the Aprilia because that bike's got 217 crank horsepower, right? And trying to launch that from a dig, if you're not really good at it, on a light, short wheelbase bike, it'd just be one to wheelie all over the place. <laughs> so it's like, let's do a first gear roll on like 30 or 40 and uh, we did this versus the mighty RSV4 1100 RR you can watch that video to see which one win that'll be a short little video maybe I'll just do a snippet I need to do shorts I'll promote the channel <laughs> just goose it front end rips right up <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this bike. A lovely machine. I don't want too many wheelies. I got a 45 pound piece of luggage on the back. Bottle of Bacardi in it. 
And my MacBook shit. Yeah, that's back there. Definitely don't want to drop that. Be out two grand in most of my videos. Yeah, this is a great little road, man. It's perfect. It's a little cool this morning. 64 degrees. Not cold. Feels good. Cop car, but he lives there, so. Yeah, so Dean's having that trouble. And then later in the day, so Cameron's got, I think he bought a leftover 18, but it was brand new with a warranty or something like that. Got a really good deal on it. I think it was an 18, or he paid 18,000. I just remember the number 18. But that Aprilia, man, I rode it once. Holy shit, is that thing fast. Easily beat my tuned R1, easily. Um, but it was, uh, he was riding down the road this is after the drag races and stuff and all of a sudden he starts getting emergency error emergency alarm um see dealer asap and it was doing that before he just had it at the dealership this week got the first service done they checked it all out ran diagnostics everything's fine code went away you're good to go sir he picks it up on friday and then yesterday so one day what's this guy doing one day later it's throwing codes and don't know why no so I'm looking at Aprilia and as much as I love Aprilia because they're very similar to Ducati Ducati however is a much higher quality better manufacturer Aprilia has the design language they've got the performance they got the pedigree I mean that RSV4 dominated World Superbike until Sykes came along on the new ZX10R but I want to say they had six or seven World Superbike titles in a row in the early teens or late 2010, you know, somewhere in that range years ago, not that long ago. And these bikes are built off of that platform. Those are production-based bikes, they're not MotoGP. And they've actually done okay in MotoGP, but, you know, I don't know where we're gonna win a title. But it was, um, it was disheartening to see both of those bikes, both of them being relatively new Jake's only has 1,300 miles, and it's going back for its second or third trip to the dealer or some kind of electronic or sensor gremlins. And you spend that kind of money on a bike, and it really does kind of bum you out. I felt bad for Jake. I, mean, I was teasing. It didn't, didn't keep me from teasing him. But I did, uh, I, did, uh, I did genuinely feel bad for him. You know, like I have my Triumph Speed Twin going down the road. I got the suspension done. We got, a, got everything the way I want it. I'm like, I'm going to do a goddamn track day on this thing. And then all of a sudden, going down the highway, and boom! The motor blows a hole in the, you know, a chunk in the, not the hole in the piston, but a, a big chunk of the piston freaking wears off. It was, uh... It just bums you out. And my problem with a bike is, once you've had it, you know, it goes in for something stupid, or a sensor replaced, or fuel pump goes back, right, whatever. But when you, it's, it's like what they say, um... People have had to have their chest cracked. You get open heart surgery. You feel invaded. There's something psychologically that people tend to experience when they have that kind of surgery that you just don't ever quite feel the same. Like your chest, your, your rib cage has come apart. There's been people up to their elbows in there and moving shit around and you just feel, I don't know, that's what I've read. Hopefully I'll never have to experience it. And so, um, I'm kind of that way with the bike, like, you know, if the master cylinder had to be replaced, you got a warped rotor, like normal shit outside the bike, I'm like, all right, whatever, put a new part on it, you know it's good to go. When a piston flies apart, I'm kind of like, I have trouble trusting it, and Jake's isn't doing that, his is electrical, but it's hard to enjoy your bike when you're just like, well, I'm, I'm up here, the nearest Aprilia dealership is 200 miles. Well, the, our, our dealership is, I don't know, maybe there's something up in South Carolina somewhere, I don't know. But, you know, their dealer network kind of sucks. <laughs> Not that many. I think Charlotte, but that's still probably two, hour, two hours, 
from here, at least. So it's kind of hard. It takes you out of the game. It's like there. I don't worry too much about it on a on a Ducati, and I don't think about it at all on a Japanese bike. I'm like yeah, anything mechanical can break, but you just you know the chances are so much slimmer on a bike like this or or on the Yamaha or Suzuki. You know, those bikes have been so proven. You can just thrash the shit out of them, and they're like whatever. Japanese engineering, you know design these to do that awesome thank you see letting us by stronger magnets on my tank bag. Every time I hit the brakes, it slides forward into the steering, uh, steering area. That's not good. I took most of the weight out of it. But it's just not sticking to the tank very well. It doesn't have much in the way of friction on the bottom, and the magnets are kind of goddamn weak. Yeah, as I'm going around turn, this thing's just fucking flying around. All right, once we're off the twisties, that'll be fun. I just want this thing to go flying. I mean, I, it's between my arms in front of me, so I'd probably be able to catch it, but I don't want a distraction in a turn and mess up the turn and go off-roading. But all in all, fantastic weekend. Kevin, can't thank you enough. I know you watch my channel, so. But this has been uh, a great weekend. I would love to do it for a little longer. I think every summer we need to come up from like Wednesday to Sunday kind of thing. I wouldn't want to do much longer just because it's exhausting. Riding sport bikes all day on roads up like that. And this little road we just went on was nothing. Um, a couple little twisties for four miles. But when you're doing that at, at, at a pace all day long, day after day, you know... <laughs> There's a reason why MotoGP racers and all those guys spend hours in the gym every day. Oh, this sucks. A camper towing his car. But yeah, seeing both of their bikes break down, I'm like... I I've said for years, you know, my favorite all-around street bike is the Tuono 1100. The look, the sound, the power, the electronics, the, the agility, it's a phenomenal bike, just amazing. But I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna drive out of state for service. And with an Italian bike, you're gonna need service at some point. But now that we got a dealer here, I was thinking, you know, I love my MT-10, that ain't going anywhere for a while. And I love this, this ain't going anywhere for a while. You know, it, it would have to be something really special to entice me away from either of these bikes. They're just tremendous. But, uh, that kind of, uh, the more likelihood of having these kinds of issues. And I think the answer is no. You know, I could see myself on a Ducati Street Fighter, either a V2 or a V4 or a Panigale, probably a V2. And that's in that kind of bike it's you know basically a 600 with insane power but uh, there's a there's a bike I'm, I'm looking for that could be really interesting. And that's the CF Moto is supposedly coming out with a 200 plus horsepower V4. That's going to look like a MotoGP bike with winglets and amazing tech. Olens. 
Brembo, if it's priced competitively, if it's like a Ford, because their bikes, when you look at what you get, their bikes are priced about 25 to 30% cheaper than their, well, not all of them. Um, I should say the, the Japanese rivals. Some of them are charged like a grand less or whatever, but others are charged like a good bit less. When you look at like the Ibex 800T, that's a bike that at least on specs is kind of almost on par with like a Tracer 9 GT. It's 10,800 versus 15,800. I mean, five grand. Now, the Yamaha's a Yamaha, and it does make a little more power, but you get the luggage and you get the TFT dash and you get the Bluetooth integration and it comes with skid plates, it comes with the heated grip. I mean, it's got everything that the Yamaha has, but it's $5,000 cheaper and it has a two-year warranty instead of one. So, and they're getting good reviews. There seem to I mean, this is, this is a partner or part of the KTM, the same group that is KTM and they're holding up. I mean, so far, from what I've seen, that 450 SS blows away the Ninja 400 as a beginner bike in every regard. Better brakes, better tires, better suspension, better dash, better tech, more power. It's a nicer bike. The fit and finish, better. The design, better. There is no area where that Kawasaki is beating it other than the reputation of Kawasaki reliability whereas CF Moto still has a little bit to go to prove themselves. Not that they need to fix anything, it's just something's got to be out in the market long enough for you to look at it and say, yeah, they don't, they've been out there for six years, and I see people on them on track days, and, you know, they're wailing on them, and they seem to hold up. You know, you can't tell with these new street bikes, you know, in a year. It might take two or three years for them to start failing, so that's what you just, you got to wait to see that long-term result. But the initial quality, pretty freaking solid. So, if they come out with a V4, which again, being based on the same company, part of the same company that owns KTM, KTM's got a 1000 V4 in MotoGP. So I have a feeling, instead of coming up and creating their own engine from scratch, they're taking that engine to an extent, right? They might change a few things. They're not going to have some of the exotic materials. They're going to lower the rev limiter instead of titanium, forged titanium con rods. You know, it might be steel or something, you know, whatever. They're going to do some things to cut costs. But as far as the overall design, it may basically be based off of an engine that does seem to be pretty reliable in MotoGP. And if it comes with that look that CF Moto is given on their other bikes and it's got the electronics and Olin's, I mean, if you're putting Olin's and Brembo and off the shelf products, those are quality products. If the frame is stout and doesn't crack, you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's hard. I mean, it, the biggest thing, I guess, could be the electronics and the motor. Are they reliable? You know, the suspension's going to work <laughs> with Olin's, you know, the brakes are going to work with Brembo. they came out with a bike like that that was basically R1 performance in a V4 with with their looks because the CF Moto bikes the guy who's designing the bikes and all the visuals was one of the top designers at Ducati got lured over to CF Moto so you see design you know when you look at their 450 SS which is a trick little bike only makes 50 horsepower but that's more than the ninja 400s perfect little starter bike or little track bike when you look at it you see a bunch of design elements from the panigale the leds the tail light the section i mean it's it's beautiful it's a really nice little bike so if you got a designer that really knows an italian designer that knows aesthetics and, and how to build that flow and harmony well, being aerodynamic but visually aggressive and it looks fast just standing there cf moto i think is going to give the japanese four a bunch of headaches in the next five years because some of the japanese bikes have been getting lazy now that doesn't mean they're not good i have two of them i love them but i think uh you're gonna see 
they're going to come in with a comparable product. They might have a few issues here and there. They'll work them out. But being that they're close ties to KTM, being that they build motors for KTM, a V4 Superbike coming in at 13, 14, 15 grand with top shelf components. I'd buy it. I would buy it. I'm going to keep an eye on them. Anyway, we're heading down into Franklin. <clears throat> My throat's getting a little scratchy from talking. So we're going to cut it short today. We're not going to do a long one. Once we get to Franklin, it's all highway the whole way home. I'm just going to cruise down the interstate. Take me maybe an eh, hour and a half -ish to get home. And that's what we're going to do today. So stay tuned for these other videos that are coming. We'll have a, a short of the drag race. You can see which bike wins. This bike's got a bit more oomph and aerodynamics, but I mean, at the crank, if this is 190, let's just say it's 190, 192, it's not more than 195. It's in the low 190s at the wheel. That's roughly 225-ish at the crank. The Aprilia is 217 at the crank, and it's 125 or 135 pounds lighter. So on paper, they should be pretty evenly matched. So we'll see if there was a clear winner. Look for that. Look for different ride videos coming up. I'll try to take the best pieces of some of the cool roads, some of the scenery. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing some videos of the Saturday morning or Sunday morning, whatever, ride with Dave. And it's going to be an ask me almost anything. <laughs> You know, throw some topics out. I'll throw a poll out on my communication page and say, give me three topics. And we'll see what people suggest. You want to talk about guns. You want to talk about politics. You want to talk about, I don't know, anything. But within reason, <laughs> if I see something stupid, uh, you know, I may not talk about that. But um, I might do some of that. Almost like, uh, you know, the viewer mail. Anyway, everybody, hope you enjoy uh, your week, and we'll see you sometime soon. And Kevin, thanks again, man. It was awesome of you to rent that place for us and host us for the weekend. That was a, that was a good weekend to get together with everybody. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.